Hello, I'm Nick Turpin. I've been a photographer based in London for over 30 years. Uh, I've worked in newspapers and I've worked in advertising, um, but I'm most known for being a street photographer. Over the next 30 minutes or so, I'm going to help you to take better photographs and I'm also going to introduce you to the practice of street photography. I'll be explaining what street photography is and why you might want to do it. I'll also be explaining some approaches and strategies that you can use on the streets and I'll be asking you to go out and try some of those for yourself. Everything we talk about today will apply to your picture making whether you're using a smartphone or an expensive camera. The principles will pretty much be the same. Photography is just a medium like painting, film or music. At the end of the day you need to decide how you want to use it, what you want to say with it. From very early on I was fascinated by the way that the, the photography recorded the world uh, and I knew that I wanted to make documents of the extraordinary. Sometimes the things I photographed were extraordinarily beautiful or extraordinarily surreal or extraordinarily funny. Either way I chose them out of the stream of life uh, because I thought they were special and I used photography to elevate them, keep them and share them. Editing is at the heart of all good photography. The camera is kind of space time editing tool, that's how I see it. Uh, you edit you edit space with the rectangle, the frame that you throw around a scene, and you edit the time with the shutter button, the moment that you choose to record. Now ultimately, the camera is just a dumb box. It has a hole on one side and a sensitive recording material on the other, film or a sensor. But it has no vision of its own. Uh, the camera absolutely needs uh, a smart human being behind it for anything magical to happen. Um, my, one of my favourite quotes about photography is by Ansel Adams who said the most important piece of equipment or the most important part of a camera is the six inches behind it. I was attracted to street photography because for me it's in the sweet spot of what the camera does best, the camera's best trick, which is to freeze a moment of reality for us to hold and inspect for days, weeks, years, decades to come. My own street photography uses the camera to record how we humans live day to day in huge modern cities. Um, I've photographed commuters returning home from work in, at night at the end of a long day uh, in, my, in my On the Night Bus project. Um, and I've photographed the commercialization of public space in my autos project where I've uh, photographed advertising reflected in cars passing through Piccadilly Circus. And I also photograph constantly uh, the unusual events that I find on our everyday streets. So what is street photography? Simply it's candid photography in the public realm. It's unstaged and it's unmanipulated. It's observational photography. Uh, you can do street photography anywhere that the public come and go freely. So this can be the streets, the public streets, uh, but it can also be parks, it can be beaches, it could be galleries, museums, anywhere that the public come and go freely and you can observe and document public life. One of the main hurdles about doing street photography I think is that most people are very nervous about photographing uh, somebody else without asking first, without getting their permission. Um, and I think one of the important things about street photography is to remember that basically you're just recording public life for history, you're not taking anything from somebody, um, you're not hurting anybody or exploiting them in any way. Uh, you're making a photograph of something in a public space um, that anybody standing there would, would just be able to see. Um, from a legal perspective, um, this changes or is different in, in different countries, but in most countries in the world, and particularly most democracies, um, you can photograph anything that you can see from a public place. So because you want to observe and photograph people and remain fairly unnoticed, um, you don't want to bruise the scene, as the street photographer Joel Mayovitz uh, describes it rather aptly, um, it's quite useful to have a fairly small camera and not, not to go out with too much equipment. You don't really want to look like a photographer, you just want to look like a, a passing uh, person or tourist in the street. Um, so I, I work with a small um, mirrorless camera uh, like this. I can actually use this with one hand if I want to. Um, I don't have to focus, it's autofocus um, and very quick and quiet to use. Uh, you need to be able to turn the flash gun off. Nothing gives you away in the street like a flash going off. Um, but equally, uh, using a mobile phone is a very good way of starting with street photography. Uh, mobile phones are so ubiquitous in a public place now that you can, you can actually start doing your street photography with a phone and perhaps move up um, to, a small, to a small digital camera you know, afterwards if you, if you find that you're enjoying it. 
When I go out shooting on the streets, I take as little as possible. I'll usually take one camera with one lens, uh, a few batteries and memory cards, just enough to keep me going during the day, some comfortable shoes, uh, usually a shower-proof, uh, you know, Mac of some sort, waterproof in my rucksack, um, a bottle of water just to keep me hydrated, and then often I will set out uh, and walk, walk several miles at a time, um, just focusing on, on what's happening on the street, looking for the next picture. I think people can get very caught up with the equipment, um, and I actually think in many ways the equipment is probably one of the least uh, important aspects of street photography. It's very much about your vision, um, the potential that you can see in, in a scene on the street, and how you, how you position yourself and record that and frame it. Um, but in terms of cameras, um, something small, as I said before, but also um, a shortish lens. You know, we tend not to do street photography with, with a big long lens. Often you're more invisible if you're close to the action, if you're part of the crowd. If you stand back with a longer lens and bigger equipment, um, you often, you often you know, get observed, you often stick out more. So take one lens, um, the equivalent of a 35 millimeter on a DSLR, a full frame camera, or a 23 on, a, on an APS camera, APS-C camera. Um, nothing too long. Um, that will give you plenty of depth of field, um, so you can get everything sharp. And then also, um, you know, you're going to want to freeze the action when you're out on the street, so I usually shoot at 500th of a second or more if I have a camera. Uh, if you're working with a smartphone, that's going to freeze the movement nearly every time for you. Um, and I also don't worry about um, the, the, the speed, the sensitivity of the, um, of the camera. So I will set my ISO sometimes at 800 or 1000 ISO. Uh, modern cameras are absolutely fine for that. Um, and that will allow you to freeze things and get enough depth of field to get everything sharp uh, when you see something special and wonderful happening on the street. So let's have a little think about how street photographs are constructed, how they're built. Are they just things that you find or can you, can you create them? Is there, is there a kind of formula that you can perhaps use? Um, now this photograph is super simple. There's literally only two elements in the, in the picture. There's the lion in Trafalgar Square and there's the foot. Uh, of somebody sitting sitting on the lion's uh, on the lion's plinth in front there. Now you can see there's a kind of dialogue between these two things, these two elements, the foot and the lion, uh, and the the dialogue kind of creates uh, an implied narrative, an implied new meaning that wasn't really there. Um, and what's nice about this is that the photographer has just brought together these two elements in the frame and presented them to you as the viewer, and the viewer. Uh, puts the two things together and in, in their mind, and they come up with this new implied narrative, with, which you know, for some maybe you know may have some humour in it. Um, so this is quite an interesting way of working. A lot of street photographs are constructed and built in this way. Now this is a super simple example, and and you know good street photographers build very complex pictures with lots of dialogues going on between things on the left and the right of the frame, between things at the front and the back of the frame. Um, that create you know, a very complex and enjoyable um, you know, image for the viewer to decode. So I thought I'd just show you this one so you can see exactly how that was made. Um, here's a picture of the photographer taking the shot. Um, and you can see here just how much he's cut out. He's, he's reduced this image to the bare bones, just, just the simplest of things. And often making a simple picture is a very effective strategy. He's cut out all the buildings behind by crouching down and looking up. He's cut out the rest of Trafalgar Square. He's even cut out the girls sitting on the plinth, apart from, from one foot. So when you see a scene, think to yourself, do I need all of this? Where is the picture in this scene? Often it's going to be you know, in there somewhere and you have to frame it, get in there and frame it with your camera. So let's quickly look at a couple of other examples. Um, you know, here's something very simple. This is in Leicester Square. And you can see the council have put a little white cross on the paving slabs that are cracked and need to be replaced. Um, and so that's the first thing I saw, and I just hovered around there waiting for somebody to walk across them. Now that, that person walking away, their, their legs, they're totally unconnected to those crosses. They don't even know, probably, they haven't even noticed that they're walking over them. It's, it's the photographer that has put these two things together to bring a little bit of humour or a kind of implied little story there. Um, and that's, that's another very simple example and something that you could find you know, fairly easily on the street when you're out with your camera. Here's another shot from Trafalgar Square. Um, you can see I was waiting to cross the road here and I saw a girl walk past me with a bag with what looked like two eyes on the back of it. And uh, she stopped there to cross the road and I noticed that there was the look sign on the floor and that 
as she walked away, I grabbed a quick shot because I could see there was a lovely connection between the eyes and what eyes do, which is, which is look. Um, so really, again, there's just two elements in the picture. But uh, when you combine them, they create, create a new and humorous uh, meaning. And here's one last shot in this sort of vein. Um, here you can see there's just a wall with some graffiti of some basketball players on the wall. Um, this is actually a picture I took in Los Angeles. But um, you can find these sorts of things you know, in the East End of London, in Brick Lane, graffiti on the wall, that kind of thing. Um, and some, uh, road, some road construction workers have left a coil of uh, cable or pipe uh, just where the ball is landing. So the two things are totally unconnected. Um, it's only the photographer who's put these two things together um, to create something humorous. Um, the fact that the, the, the workman is walking past there and is just being held back quite nicely by the basketball player as well adds another little element to it. That's beginning to get just a little more complicated. Now one of the things I'm going to ask you to do is to kind of stake out an interesting background. Uh, find a really lovely piece of architecture or maybe a shop front or a graffiti or an archway or something that you can frame very nicely with that rectangle uh, of your viewfinder. So here is a scene in London. Um, this is in um, just off Charing Cross Road. And you can see here that um, it's a very colourful scene and I've framed it quite carefully. Uh, you can see there's a yellow square in the top right hand corner. There's a yellow square in the bottom left hand corner. Um, and then I've included as many colours as I could. There's a green wheelie bin, there's some blue barriers there. Um, I also knew that occasionally a bus would come past there and add a th you know, fifth or sixth colour, a red colour there. Um, I also liked the arrows on the vinyl on the building on the left, pointing to the left of the picture, so I included those. So I tried to make a frame, really, that was just beautifully composed. But then I needed something to bring it to life, so I waited there, probably for over an hour, uh, photographing people walking and moving through this space, trying to capture somebody in exactly the right place. So what I was looking for here is a photograph that uses the frame beautifully, to, comp to, to compose a you know, superb picture, but also uh, to use the shutter button to choose exactly the right moment. What Cartier-Bresson might have referred to as a decisive moment. Um, so eventually I got this guy who walked in, and, and uh, as an added bonus he was in high-vis uh, overalls, which brought another, you know, another colour element to the picture. Um, now he passed just as the bus was passing in the background, and I took two or three frames quite quickly you know, sometimes when you see something that's wonderful, your heart kind of leaps and you just don't hesitate. Don't think too much. Take as many pictures as you can. If it feels instinctively good, just shoot. You can always edit it later. And I chose this frame because I like the words on the bus. Um, I like the way they look like they're coming out the back of his head like thoughts. Um, so this is the kind of picture which I'm out there trying to make. Um, something that's sort of complex and beautiful and ticks a lot of boxes for me. So if you go out in the city with your camera, uh, it's very easy to do lots of walking and not much picture taking. So one of the things I'm going to suggest is that you choose quite a small area to work in. Um, this is going to focus your vision, focus your mind on uh, what is happening there, what's coming and going. Um, now obviously you want to choose a fairly busy place to give yourself a bit of a chance. Um, but you know, somewhere like Oxford Circus, Piccadilly Circus, Buckingham Palace, places where people come and go regularly. Um, you know, some of the bridges in London are quite good for this. Um, that would be the kind of place that I would choose. So what I'm going to show you here are some little sets of three pictures from different places. So this first one is from Buckingham Palace. Now I worked in Buckingham Palace for three or four days uh, looking for interesting things, kind of collecting pictures, looking for interesting things that were happening. So there's this guy with the flag, nicely lit from behind. Um, I got in the crowds, here's a young guy taking a picture and holding his coffee in his mouth so that he's got his hands free. And I got nice and close to him, I saw him do it once and then he did it a few more times and I managed to get a picture. And then I noticed uh, when the horse guards came past Buckingham Palace, every single person in the crowd took a photograph. And um, there was this kind of rather lovely, lovely view of everyone with their phones. So there's three pictures from one place. Um, and I think this can be very successful. Let's have another look. Let's have another little look at this. Um, okay, here are three pictures, all from Piccadilly Circus. So I'm standing in Piccadilly Circus. Here's a group of lads, I think on a stag weekend, all walking past with uh, their London t-shirts on. 
I thought that was a little bit unusual. I followed them and tried to get as many of the sea shirts in the shot as I could. Um, here's a picture uh, of a bus that came past every 10 or 15 minutes. Every time I saw the bus approaching, I really liked the architecture on it, uh, the way that it juxtaposed with the architecture in Regent Street. And uh, I, I took probably 50, 60 pictures of this bus over a number of days, and eventually something nice extra happened. This lady crossed the road with her phone. The phone was the same colour as the bus, and she held it up to her, to her face, covering her eyes, and I got the picture that I'd been in, envisaging all along. Um, and then here's a picture of um, a limousine passing with three girls in. And so you can see, uh, sometimes you be, you know, you choose a spot, you can look around you at the people, you can look up, up at the windows around you, see what's happening there, uh, but also in the road, you know, things are driving past you all the time and there's interesting pictures to be made there as well. So by choosing one place and focusing your attention there, you start to see things which you probably wouldn't see if you just walked continually, uh, you know, on a route ac across the city. So I've come out into the city to do some street photography. But before we do street photography, I'm going to give you a few general tips about photography and, and using your cameras just to get you started. So most people, when they see something they like, uh, they grab their camera, they put it to their face, they push the button and a photograph is made. They don't really think about the decisions that they're making when they do that. So what decisions are you making when you take a photograph? The camera viewfinder is a rectangle and you throw that rectangle around the scene that you're photographing. It has sides, it has the top and bottom and corners. I want you to think about where those, where those sides and the top and the bottom, the corners of the picture fall against the scene you're photographing. Sometimes you might want to move backwards or forwards just to, to make a better composition, a little bit left and right. Think about you know, framing things beautifully. The other decision you're making is, is the moment that you choose with the shutter button. Um, so once you've got your beautiful composition, people are coming and going, things are moving in the frame, think very carefully about the moment that you choose to make your exposure. Now I'm convinced that the best street photographs have those two decisions, that beautiful frame, that perfect moment, both made beautifully within the same frame. The city is a very busy, chaotic and noisy place and I think as photographers one of the things we're trying to do is to pull a nice moment of order out of that chaos. And one of the main tools that we can use to do that is, is the composition. Um, so when I'm out uh, framing up a, a nice scene, I see a scene of, that, I, that I really like, um, I, put, I put the camera to my face and I try and keep the verticals in the scene uh, upright. I keep them parallel to the verticals of the side of my frame. And one of the ways I do this is by not tilting the camera. I don't tilt the camera down or up. If I need to move up and down, then I'll keep the camera absolutely horizontal, but I'll, but I'll crouch down instead. And this allows me to, to make a much more deliberate and controlled composition. So here's a very simple scene. This is the side of the Bank of England. It has some beautiful uh, columns on the side. It's a very graphic, really nice composition. It's a nice stage for me to watch. So I'm going to frame up this and wait for people to walk in and out of the scene. So I'm going to try and keep those columns vertical not look up and down. There's a nice white line in the road and as people walk through the frame I'm going to snap a picture when they're just in the right place between the columns. Keeping the columns upright and just waiting for people to walk in. Here comes the corner of the bus but I actually quite like that. That's quite a nice frame. Often things will happen which you're not expecting but you can take advantage of them. So I'm just being patient, just standing here got my composition, I'm not moving from the spot. I know when the right people move in, it's going to make a nice picture. I'm just watching this, waiting for people to walk in and out of the frame. Trying to capture them in a nice place between the columns. You can see at the bottom of the frame, there's a white line in the road. I'm trying to keep that white line parallel with the bottom of the frame of the camera. Here's a guy walking in, I'm just going to grab him as he's between the columns. Here's another guy walking in. Just going to get him there, there, and there. Here's a lady with a suitcase, which I rather like. I'm just going to get her there. So I've come around to the back of the Bank of England. Um, I like to work in one small area. I'm going to come down for an hour or two uh, and it's just really explore it. 
Um, and around the back here is this beautiful archway. Now the arch is very tall, so it's a bit too tall for me to get in my composition this way. So I'm going to turn my camera upright into portrait format so I can fit it all in. I really like the pale stonework. I like the um, traffic light here, the black traffic light. Look how graphic that is against the pale, the pale wall. So I'm going to shoot here, I'm going to frame up my picture and wait for some people to walk in. Now a good sign is if you frame up your scene and it's already a beautiful picture right there without any people. That means you've pretty much got 50% of your shot already and you just need a person to walk into frame to complete it. So here are some people walking into frame. I'm going to just let them get into the archway. Those two at the end are quite nice. Quite nice as they disappear. So I'm going to spend a little time here waiting. Here's a guy walking across the archway. So once you've got your frame, you need to be patient. You need to watch it for a little while and see what comes your way. And this guy. So he was very nice. The guy was completely in black, um, which is nice against the pale stonework. The same as the traffic light being black against the pale stonework. Just nice contrasty images, just aesthetically and visually pleasing. And one of the things I've noticed is that really great photographs happen whilst you're out making good ones. You have to be out there taking pictures on the street for the occasional really great thing to happen. So here we have a nice composition. When people walk through, it's a really good photograph. Um, but it's not a great photograph. What I need is somebody with a top hat or with a bunch of flowers or just something unusual, something really unexpected, which would just elevate this into something really great. Very, a very simple example of uh, putting two things together to make a new meaning, to make a little juxtaposition. Um, this is kind of a bit of the sort of bread and butter of a lot of street photography when you're starting out. Um, is to use a sculpture. And here we are beside a, a bank with a beautiful carved sculpture. I'm going to try and capture people uh, passing beneath it, try and make a nice interaction between the two. So I'm going to frame up. I've got my shutter speed at 500th of a second so I can freeze people moving past. lady in the mask walking past below there. I'm standing in the road slightly, so I'm having to be a bit wary. I'm looking up and down the street to see who's coming. So again, I need a little bit of patience here. Waiting for the right people to come to come past. So I want to frame this quite tightly. Oh, that's nice. A couple holding hands. So as soon as somebody else walks into the picture, there is a relationship between them and the sculpture. There's a dialogue between the two elements in the frame. It's a very simple street photograph, but. I'm just watching, seeing who comes in now to the frame. We're keeping it quite simple, quite tight, just the two elements. So you could do this with anything figurative. You could do it with an advertising poster, with a sculpture like this in your town centre, or you could do it with uh, a piece of graffiti. Anything that's figurative, which could have a relationship between itself and a passing person, would be quite a nice place to stop and try and make some pictures. So I was just coming back across the bridge uh, and I noticed this nice social distancing blue line and coming towards me with a girl was a guy in a blue outfit which looked uh, the same sort of blue as this. Uh, so I grabbed the camera, turned it on its side and took a picture with the two, the guy walking along the blue line. Um, and that's the kind of thing where you see something at the last minute, you make the connection in your head and you have to make the picture really, really quickly. And it's a nice little juxtaposition, just two elements 
um, but there's a dialogue between them which creates a new meaning. So one of the strategies I like to use when I'm out taking pictures on the street is to just focus on one little area. I try and find someone that's reasonably busy, that has a little bit of colour. Um, I like the spire here. There's lots of street furniture. Um, so if you're choosing one, one spot, you tend to make more pictures. It focuses your, your picture making and uh, your concentration. Um, and otherwise, you tend to do more walking than, than photography if you're not careful. So there's even, there's even a nice little arrangement of things here. I like these bins, the bicycle, the signs on the post there, the spire behind. Um, there's actually a nice little composition to make on this little corner that I'm watching. There's a person walking into frame. Some more people, it's getting a little bit busy. Girl in blue dress is nice, adds a bit of colour. So I like this bit of stonework here. It's very angular, fits into the frame very nicely. The window's behind as well. Makes a nice foil if people walk past as well. And it's a nice place for people to walk in front of. Little gap there where people walk at the top of the stairs. There's someone now, look, just there. There's a guy coming with headphones on who's going to walk in front of this bit of stonework. A guy coming down the stairs on his phone. Ah, oh, that was nice. A guy in front of the stonework and the guy on the stairs at the same time. So what I'm doing is standing in this one space. I've made three pictures here already in the last five or six minutes. And I'm just seeing things. I'm learning about the space, the, the, the opportunities to make a picture here. Look at this figure here. She was good, all in black with the, the hoodie against the pale stonework again, very nice. This guy's going to walk in front. He was a nice shape. Yeah, so these little shapes, this little staircase, it's been quite fruitful for me. I could easily have just walked past this had I not decided just to work in this space for, for half an hour. So I'm just back from a nice day out with my camera in the city and uh, what are the things you saw me do today? We started at the Bank of England where I used some nice backgrounds there. Um, I composed them, framed them up and I waited for people to walk in and out and I chose just the right moment to make a nice picture. And then you saw me curating pictures. Uh, I used a sculpture uh, at one point and then the blue line on London Bridge um, and waited for other elements to come into the picture to get two things that made a new dialogue together. And then finally down at London Bridge Station, I worked in one small area, um, making several pictures, all close together in the, in the same few metres of pavement. Now it's your turn. I have three tasks for you. The first task is about composition and moment. Find a great background in a busy spot, frame it nicely and then wait for people to enter the frame, capturing them in the perfect place. The second task is to practice curating a picture. Combine two or more unrelated elements in one frame that look the same, echo each other or create a new meaning. The third task is to focus your observation. Choose one place like a street corner, an underground exit or a square and make three pictures in the same place. We'd love to see your pictures and you can share them with us using the hashtag OurCityTogether and tagging VisitTheCity on Instagram. I'll see you on the street.